Today's episode is for the 15th of the month of Cheshvan. We will be finishing off chapter 11, discussing laws of mezuzah, doing paragraphs 21 through 25. In addition, we'll be starting chapter 12, discussing preparations for prayer and doing paragraphs 1 through 4. Today's episode is dedicated in memory of my father, Allah Shalom, Rabbi Mendel Dun Friedman, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Dun Ben Ayyulib. Today is his yard site, and today's learning should be an aliyah for his neshama, a merit for his soul. Chapter 11, paragraph 21. We so far discussed what types of rooms need a mezuzah, the blessing of the mezuzah. Now we're going to discuss when do you put up a mezuzah? Do you have to put it up right away or not? So if somebody is renting a home outside of Israel, then they do not need to put up a mezuzah until they're there for 30 days. As a matter of fact, even if you're going to be there for a long time, you have a, you, just, you just signed a one-year contract, so you're certainly going to be there more than 30 days, you still are not really supposed to make a bracha until 30 days are up, so until the night after 30 days. So what you should do is you should put up the mezuzah straight when you move in, and then after 30 days you take them off, make a blessing, and put them back up. If you buy a house, however, you're supposed to put up mezuzahs right away. If you rent a house in Israel, then you put up, you have to put up mezuzahs right away as well, and so you put it up right when you move in and you make a blessing. Paragraph 22. If you're moving out of your house and you know that the person moving in is another Jewish family, another Jewish person, then you're not supposed to take down your mezuzahs. So you have to leave your mezuzahs up so they have them right away as soon as they move in, and they now have to pay you for the mezuzahs. Paragraph 23. A person should be extremely scrupulous to make sure that they are doing the mitzvah of mezuzah properly. When we put a mezuzah on our home, we're elevating our entire house. Every time we walk through our doorways and we see the mezuzah on the doorpost, it's supposed to remind us of God, our connection to God, how much God loves us. And it's a great way to knock us out of the inertia of the the day-to-day grind. The Talmud says that having mezuzah up in our doors properly is a merit to have a long life and to have a long life for our children as well. Paragraph 24. It's appropriate when we pass through a doorway that has a mezuzah on it to reach up and touch the mezuzah and then give our hands a kiss. We're not supposed to touch the actual scroll itself, but we touch the mezuzah cover. The mezuzah is supposed to bring down God's protection to the home. And therefore, it's very common that when some tragedy happens in the home or a few tragedies, a lot of people getting sick or something of that sort for people to have their mezuzah checked. Paragraph 25. A privately owned mezuzah should be checked every, twice every seven years. A mezuzah, which is in a public room or a public building, should be checked twice every 50 years. Chapter 12. Preparations for prayer. Specifically, preparing our bodies for prayer and the places where are appropriate to pray. Paragraph 1. When we pray, we have to realize we are speaking to God. We have to make sure that we're dressed appropriately. We're going to get to some specifics but just like we wouldn't approach a dignitary wearing shorts, it's not appropriate to come to pray wearing shorts. And this is true whether we're praying in shul and synagogue or even in our own homes. When we're praying at home, we're still speaking to God, and therefore we should make sure we're dressed appropriately as well. The Kitzvah Shachanarach mentions a custom to wear a belt when praying. This in Yiddish is called a gartel, and if that is the custom where you live, then you got to make sure to wear a gartel when you pray. Nowadays, this is only common in the Hasidic communities. Paragraph 2. It's appropriate before prayer to give charity. There's also a custom to give not before prayer, but to give charity at certain points during prayer. Most notably in a paragraph towards, towards the end of the Psuke de Zimra section called Vayavarich David. Before one begins prayer, they should accept upon themselves the mitzvah of Yahavta Larecha Kamocha, loving your fellow as yourself. The more that we are united, the more that we care for each other, the better our prayers will be and the more likely our prayers will be accepted. When God sees that we're unified, that we're praying together as one group, then he is much more likely to accept our prayers and to get, and to listen to what we're asking for. Paragraph 3. One is not allowed to pray if he has to go to the bathroom. Therefore, before prayer, take a minute, pause. Should I run to the bathroom or can I start my priority? If one prayed and he had to go to the bathroom during prayer, then is that a valid prayer or does he have to pray again? So the halacha is if that when he w- when he started praying, if he would have been able to comfortably not go to the bathroom for 72 minutes, then his prayer is a good prayer. However, if not, then he actually would have to pray a second time. 
paragraph four. If one is having some stomach problems and they're not able to hold themselves back from passing gas, it's not appropriate to pray right now. And they certainly cannot work to fill in like we saw back in chapter 10. This is true even if, you, if he's going to miss the time of saying Shema. There's a certain time period you have to say Shema in. Even if you're going to miss that time, you still cannot say Shema if you're not able to have what we call in Hebrew a guf naki, a clean body. If a person feels they could hold himself back with for enough time to say Shema and Shemona Esrei, Namida, then he should quickly put on his tefillin, say Shema and say the Shemona Esrei, and then take them right off. This concludes today's episode. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.